Thank you, Gustus. <laughs> We're live. Hi there, folks. This is WP Tonic, episode 114. We've got a fantastic show here, folks. We're going to bring light about the best value WordPress hosting options you can get for your money. And we've got a fantastic guest that I've totally butchered their name, but I'm going to have a go. It's Costas. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us, Costas. I'd like to introduce yourself properly, can you? Yes, thank you for, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, so my name is Costas and I'm uh, I'm the owner of uh, WP Hosting Spot and we specialize in providing uh, managed WordPress solutions. That's great. And I've got my beloved and extremely patient co-host John mm -hmm. Locke. Would you like to introduce yourself, John? Sure thing. My name is John Locke, and I run a small WordPress consultancy in Sacramento called Lockdown Design. Now, John, was you really impressed with my total inability to pronounce my go my guest name? We we got you to a good place. Costas, he did. They were extremely patient, actually, but it's a bit embarrassing. But nobody understands what I'm saying anyway, John. So it don't really matter. <laughs> uh, um, so Costas, um, you've recently taken over the company, but you've got many many years in hosting. Would you like because you're um, WP Hosting Spot is a bit different than your traditional hosting company, isn't it? Would you like to explain what the major difference is and why it's? I feel it's really exciting. Yeah, but of course, it's uh, it's extremely different than any uh, normal uh, shared hosting solution, which they usually offer a C panel or some sort of control panel, and it's all uh, one click. But they're usually not optimized for. WordPress sites, they're, they're just generic host. Uh, they're there to offer the basic hosting, but they're not really optimized. They don't offer CVS solutions. They're, uh, they're just normal hosting companies. So uh, WP Hosting Spot, what we do here is we offer uh, managed WordPress solutions. We're specialized in WordPress uh, and offering WordPress solutions. Uh, we also integrate with KeyCDN. Uh, because we and all of our all of our stacks include engines by default, uh, something that you don't really see uh, amongst the shared hosting companies, amongst most of them. Yeah, but the other factor, Costas, is that you know you're using about three different companies. One of them is Digital Ocean um, and Lindold and uh, another, for me, unpronounceable company. But um, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of DigitalOcean. So you offer, a, you offer three really valued options with three different companies, but they, you're offering a kind of 24-hour um, support, um, support over these frameworks. Is that a good way, or have I totally butchered the real explanation? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we basically take uh, take these big large hosting companies, which they're known for providing stability. They offer a great service, all three of them, both Lino, DigitalOcean, and Vulture. And we add on top of their service, uh, we, be, we have our own stack that we deploy on the, on the VPSs. And then we add fully managed 24-hour uh, support on them, uh, specializing in WordPress. Because they just basically offer the, the hardware, let's say. And we just we offer the rest. We offer the support. We all, we enter, we install our own stacks, uh, which are optimized specifically for WordPress. Yeah, and folks, we're thinking. You know, I've got a few people on Digital Ocean, and I'm thinking of moving myself, try myself out first, because I, I run um, or me and um, John run um, WP Tonic on Digital Ocean, and we're thinking of moving it to. Um, WP hosting spot and letting you and your team manage it for a little while and then if everything goes right move some of our clients to you because um, I was actually yes. recommended you by Brian Jackson who's been on the panel he spoke very highly of the company and the previous owner and he also thinks you're going to be a great success with the business so um, shout out for Brian he kind of put me on to you um, so, you know, you've got many years' experience in hosting. 
what, what do you think? Um, I think hosting, in a way, has gone in the wrong direction. It, it, in some ways, has really become very commoditized and promises things at a price level which it can't really meet. Would you agree with that very broad statement? And could you explain why you've um, some of the things you don't like about it that you're trying to solve with your own solutions? <laughs> Yeah, of course, I, I agree with that statement fully. Uh, for example, we have there's a lot of unlimited shared hosting companies around. Uh, well, there's one thing: there is no such thing as unlimited. So that's uh, that's, in my opinion, that's just a marketing term because at some stage, uh, a host will need to will will need to limit, limit your resources. I mean, they won't be able to offer you 500 gigs of disk space on a shared. Uh, four dollar hosting plan, for example. Uh, there's some stuff that are uh, such as that. Also, I feel that right now in 2016, there's there's a lot of uh, common things between all of the hosting companies. I mean, no one is actually trying to uh, launch something new, something out of the ordinary. So we usually see uh, a host using cPanel. As their as their control panel, so it's it's a base, it's the same in the same uh, solution, configured in the exact same way. Basically, you usually see C panel. That you might sometimes they add cloud Linux for uh, separating customers between them. Sometimes they just use Apache. Uh, sometimes even Lightspeed. Sometimes which is a uh, bit better than uh, Apache. But none of the hosts actually try to. Try to customize their their solution and offer something out of the ordinary, something new, uh, and try to offer a better service than someone else. It's, I feel that we're in we're in a in a year where everything is launch, new companies are launching, but they're like clones of the other companies. Yeah, um, I think that's well put. Um, I think another factor, you know, with all the free companies um, solutions that you offer. Obviously, DigitalOcean was the one I knew, and we had a pre, we had some discussion, and you pointed out the strengths and weaknesses of all three companies that you deal with. Uh, is it correct um, that none of them, which I don't actually think is a bad thing, this um, sometimes when we talk to clients, they get a little bit worried. But none of, am I correct in saying that none of these solutions offer email um, as as part of their service? Um, be, because I think you, if you can, you should separate your email like you should separate your domain from your hosting company. First of all, am I correct about that? And secondly, do you think do you agree that it's a good idea to separate your email from your hosting in a way? Yeah, that's correct. None of none of our uh, packages offer email, and in my opinion, that's actually good because email should really be. Uh, be hosted by, for example, Google Apps, by specialized email hosting companies. The thing that uh, a lot of hosting providers are having again and again is uh, they're having blacklisted IPs. So ultimately, no one is able to send from their shared four dollar per month hosting account. So the best solution is, in my opinion, a Google Apps account or some or, or Zoho email or some some sort of specialized company where they specialize in providing only email hosting and they can uh, fit the needs of a small business or a medium or a large business. Uh, and yeah. they offer a much better stability than another uh, provider. Now, um, with your packages, they're all, uh, am I correct, they're all VPS solutions, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. They're all VPS, so all, all the resources are dedicated to, to the specific clients. Now, could you explain to the listeners in uh, trying to attempt this, because I, I know you're a highly technical individual, but trying to explain what a VPS, the difference between shared hosting and VPS is, because I'm sure that some, a lot of it, our listeners totally understand, but we've got a very broad and diverse audience here. So maybe you could explain the difference between shared hosting and VPS and some of the benefits that you see in running a VPS. Okay. Well, basically, in a shared kind, in a shared hosting uh, environment, you're on a server with a couple hundreds of other accounts. Uh, so what that means for you is that means that 
if let's say one of the other sites experienced an, inc an influx of traffic or some sort of uh, hack attempt, that, that means that all sites on that server will get will have some effect on that because they're all on that one server. That means as well that if uh, if if for some reason uh, a site on that server gets hacked, it could very well be that the whole IP of the server gets uh, blacklisted by Google, for example, and gets listed as malware, uh, which would affect also your rankings in terms of CEO, in terms of uh, the search engines. Whereas with a uh, VPS, you have your own IP address, you're hosted on your own, uh, it's, it, it's a virtual dedicated server. Uh, so it's like, it's not a dedicated server with a physical machine, but it's a virtual server uh, it comes with a dedicated IP, dedicated environment, so you're hosting on your own, uh, so you don't have to worry about bad neighbors, for example, or someone else getting your IP blacklisted or having a hack site or using too many resources that would slow down your site. That's great, and um, I think you, for the kind of specification with free the three companies that you work with, you offer tremendous value, don't you? Um, and I think the other bit, but I don't think it's, um, you know, it's probably not suitable for uh, somebody starting out. Um, they probably might be better off looking at shared hosting, but somebody that's got e commerce, a membership site, a site that's got reasonable traffic, I think you offer tremendous value. And am I correct in those statements? You know, do, do you think that you you offer great value for the person that's got a WordPress membership site or e-commerce? Yeah, of course, of course, I I believe that. And for example, on the WooCommerce site, uh, those type of sites are hard to run on the shared uh, type of environment. There, right? because of the resources they actually need to run successfully. And also, on, on the other hand, there's also uh, the matter of you'll need at some stage to get PCI compliant if you want to accept credit cards. That's something that can't be done on a shared hosting company. There's no way that uh, that can be done. That can only be done in a VPS environment uh, where ports can be blocked and you can get a, a PCI compliant hosting so that you can accept credit cards on your site. That's a great point. Um, I think the other thing is um, you do get some people that try and just run something like Digital Ocean on their own, um, but that's pretty dicey. What What are some of the problems you can have if you try and run um, a Digital Ocean VPS just on your own? Well, the the default templates that uh, Digital Offer provides they're not really optimized. They really need optimization, a lot of optimization. If you try to run uh, the default template of DigitalOcean, you're probably, you may not be happy with, with the speed that you're going to get on your site. And that's not due to DigitalOcean. That's due to they don't really uh, manage the, the actual, they don't really optimize the templates that they use. They just provide a basic template that fits into all or most of their customer needs but it's up to their customer to actually optimize it and make it uh, the best so that they can get the best out of it. Yeah, that's great. So of, of the free plans, um, the free service um, companies that, um, that you're managing, the networks that they're providing, which one do you think offers the best value at the present moment? Yeah, well, I think all three of them have some advantages. Uh, all three of them are continuously investing in their infrastructure in their network uh, level as well as their hardware infrastructure. Uh, Linux recently doubled their, uh, their RAM on all their VPS for free, for example. Uh, DigitalOcean is adding also new services, new locations all the time, same with, same with Goldshire. Uh, they're continuously investing, so I would believe that uh, all three of them would, would actually be really really good options in, uh, at this time. Oh, that's great. I think we're going to go for our break, uh, folks. And when we cut back, my co-host John Locke is going to ask some more questions. We're going to delve a bit more into the how to get the best value WordPress hosting you can. That's painless, powerful, and really helps your business. That doesn't become a burden upon it. We'll be back in a minute, folks. 
we're coming back and John's going to take over. What's your first question, John? Sure thing. Constantinos. A lot of small businesses that I run into uh, and even some larger organizations, they're either trying to manage their own hosting or they're hosting on an environment like GoDaddy or HostGator. What's you know the elevator pitch that you would give to them to invest in managed WordPress hosting uh, like WP Hosting Spot? Yeah, well, as I said uh, basically before, a shared hosting solution isn't always the best for uh, for WordPress sites, and if your if your WordPress site is is large, uh, it will start facing issues at some stage with with any provider. Either it's going to hit uh, their memory limits, or it's going to hit some limits uh, that they have. Uh, because even if they advertise unlimited everything, there is always some limit. Uh, unfortunately, nothing can be unlimited as much as. Uh, Companies advertise the word unlimited doesn't actually exist. Uh, so, in my opinion, it's much more also secure to have your site uh, in a managed environment, uh, in, my, in a managed VPS environment. It's extremely more secure. Sure. Um, now, here's some questions more about like technical aspects of hosting. Um, why is should people have a, a CDN with their hosting, and, and why is that important to page speed? Yeah, okay. Well, the CDN basically will uh, offload all your images, the CSS, so the CDN handles all of that. So that you'll see an immediate increase in, uh, in your site speed. Uh, you'll see seconds being shaved off from your site speed and the quicker site speed. The quicker site speed, the better it is, both for ranking purposes, both for uh, your user experience, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, so here's a question, too. Uh, pretty soon, HTTP2 is coming. And, and how is that going to affect uh, the Internet as a whole and, and page speed in particular? Yeah, well, HTTP2 will definitely help a lot. Uh, all of our infrastructure already fully supports HTTP2. All of our stacks are fully support it. Uh, and that's also something that you don't see in the normal uh, shared hosting environment because new technologies are more difficult to apply in a normal shared hosting environment, uh, but they're much easier to apply in a VPS environment. Uh, so page speeds will definitely be much better now with HTTP2. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. So, um, and as far as like caching, what sort of caching do you guys offer? Or if somebody's not using uh, WP hosting spot in particular, what is caching and why is that important to, to page speed? Yeah, caching is uh, extremely important as well because it caches, uh, it caches your site makes it quicker for everyone to load. I usually recommend, uh, for caching at least, I usually recommend WP Super Cache. Uh, that seems to be one of the most stable options currently in the market. There are a few other, but uh, there are a few, a few that aren't as stable and may cause issues. WP Super Cache seems to always uh, work, uh, at least uh, in my experience. Absolutely. So I, I'm going to shift and talk more about how difficult has it been to uh, make a dent in the hosting market. Uh, you know, there's like a million hosts out there, it seems. Um, you know, how is WP Hosting Spot uh, going out there and finding their customers, and, and how, uh, what steps have you taken to, to uh, kind of find those customers? Yeah, um, I will agree that it's more difficult for a specialized provider to find those customers, uh, and it's even more difficult because we don't offer the standardized tools such as cPanel, where a customer will, when they contact us, their first question was, do you offer cPanel? Uh, so we don't offer that, but that's because we're a managed solution, and we, we offer a custom stack uh, where we, uh, we concentrate on speed rather than uh, rather than offering something like cPanel, which is a nice control panel. I use it at times, but 
it's not really optimized. Uh, it's not really doesn't really have any specific optimizations. It doesn't use Nginx either. It uses Apache. It uses Apache. Uh, so that's uh, that's a huge minus on that on that stage. But it's also not as easy to customize. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I would do to tell people to uh, get them on our services. That will get a much much better speed. Uh, much better security, uh, a lot more stable service, basically, when using us rather than using their normal uh, shared hosting provider. So when, when it comes to customer onboarding, uh, when it comes to WP hosting spot, not having a C panel, is, is there a lot of onboarding that has to be done, or are those like conversations that you have in the sales team with customers, or does that happen in the support side, or or onboarding, or, or you know how do, how do you explain those differences? Yeah, well, uh, we do have we do have actually we do send a uh, an article when someone signs up explaining the steps how how they can get started uh, with their site. We do help them all along the way as well since we're a managed provider. Anything they need, we're always there for them and we always assist. Uh, it's just there is what I believe a a kind of uh, it's kind of people sometimes get stuck in C panel and that control panel, and sometimes, in my opinion, at least, sometimes some people lose on on the performance benefits that a non C panel based solution can offer. So uh, it basically boils down to education, educating the customer. Yeah, I believe there there's a lot to be done on that and on educating the customer, making them aware that C panel is a good control panel. Yep, but if you want real real good performance, then uh, what we offer as WP Hosting Spot will outperform any normal C panel uh, shared hosting provider. Definitely. Uh, so I'm going to shift uh, right now. We normally ask our spotlight guests uh, to list some of their life success or leadership principles. And uh, you talked about, uh, you know, community, uh, loving what you do, uh, customer satisfaction, and setting big goals. Uh, would you like to elaborate on, on those leadership and, and success principles? Yeah, of course. I'm. I really love what I do every single day, all the time. I'm always there. Anyone that needs me, they know that I'm yeah. there. Can I? Uh, can I butt yeah. in? Actually, um, Constantine doesn't sleep. Actually, he, yeah. I think it's about almost three o'clock at your time, isn't it? Yeah, but you don't mind it because you he is available 24 hours a day because you you never sleep, do you? Yeah, but yeah, that is true. I do try to sleep though, if uh, when when possible. Uh, but always, uh, customers are are really a priority. Uh, there's alerts coming on my phone if, if there should, should be a server offline or something. Uh, so it's it's a real 24-hour uh, work. No, and and that shines through because you do. You do try and support customers, um, and and again, like with hosting, I think that is really one of the most important factors in choosing a host. Um, yeah, yeah, pop time is really important, and we try to have a uh, hundred percent up time or as close as hundred percent as possible, because there's sometimes uh, things happen out of our control, like upstream provider has issues, uh, so sometimes it can't be exactly hundred percent. We strive to be as close to that as possible. So, uh, and and here's an interesting thing uh, that I, I think we talked about before, but um, you said customer service isn't just about answering the question the client has sent, but it's about how it's answered. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, exactly. Because uh, if a customer sends a question, for example, how do I log into my, uh, to my site, you could technically just answer, well, you can log into your site by going to this URL, use this username and password. But I believe in offering uh, more than that, not just uh, sending them a kind of old answer and 
moving on to the next customer. I, I like spending some time on each individual customer and making sure that they're fully aware of uh, of their of everything that they're able to log in fine to their control panel or whenever they log, want to log in. And if they had any issues, I'm, I, I'd like to hear their feedback. Uh, that's why we've also recently impl implemented the feedback forum on all of our tickets, so that they're also able to submit their feedback as to what we're doing, what they like about us, about us if there's something we're doing wrong. I'm always uh, open to hear about feedback, both negative and positive, because both types of feedback help uh, improve the company uh, and take it to the next level. And it's really important to hear what your customers uh, want to say. Yeah, mo most definitely. I'm going to kick it back to Jonathan. Uh, so, Jonathan? Yeah, that's great. Um, I've got kind of one finishing question for the actual recorded podcast. And then, Constantine, we're, um, we're ask how people can get hold of you. And also, you've got a fantastic special offer for our listeners as well. Um, and then we'll go on to another 10, 15 minutes, which will be for the uh, YouTube and for people coming to the website, where they'll be able to get the discount code for the special offer as well, folks. So my final kind of question is, uh, how do you deal with um, secure socket? certificates, um, uh, how much are they um, and do you install them for clients and how much do you charge? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so all of, all of our stacks, they include actually Let's Encrypt by default. Uh, I believe that Let's Encrypt has done a great job in, in, their, in their work and we've, we're fully integrated Let's Encrypt into all our stacks so our customers can benefit with free SSLs for as many sites as they want at any time. Now, uh, in, the, in the case that they want to actually buy an SSL certificate from somewhere, we can also help them install that as well. And uh, like if they wanted a wildcard certificate, that, what that is, folks, is if you've got a number of subdomains, it will be covered by the same certificate. If they wanted to install that, do you, do you offer that and how much do you charge? Yeah, well, we don't actually sell SSL certificates, so they would need to actually buy the, the actual SSL certificate from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we would help, obviously, with the installation and configuration of, of the SSL certificate, and that's with no charge either. Now, about, just to kind of finish off with the onboarding, so basically you probably have, um, when somebody signs up and they choose the provider from the free that you that you give information on, you probably then provide some forms and you said you provide a PDF. Um, how, so you just ask for some basic information and then you set it up and then um, I suppose either you could transfer the domain or I suppose you really um, prefer people that they park their domain with a, with a, a domain hosting company like GoDaddy or one of the others and then do you will you point it for them or offer advice about how they point the domain to the server? Yeah well we usually recommend actually using Cloudflare because they provide a really good uh, DNS hosting service right. uh, so we usually recommend customers point the name service to Cloudflare and out the sites uh, into Cloudflare because um, it's a really stable service there that they offer and well, at least you have uh, you're sure on the DNS part that you won't actually have any downtime. You won't be dependent on on your domain registrar uh, DNS hosting of options, which a lot of domain registrars offer. So we fully recommend Cloudflare, uh, and also there's a lot of benefits in using Cloudflare, such as uh, nearly instant updates uh, to the IP address, for example, if you want to move from your previous hosting to us to our hosting company. Uh, the IP change takes barely 15 minutes, whereas uh, if you were going to change the name servers from one uh, domain uh, name provider, uh, one domain name service provider to another, it will take a few hours to actually propagate fully all around the internet. That's great. So let's wrap up on the podcast recording side, Constantine. How can people get hold of you and find more about you and your company? Okay then, so we're available through our site, wphostingspot.com. There's a contact form there. Well, we also do offer uh, live chat, 
that is available uh, first close of 24 hours per day. Uh, well, or people can contact us at any time, and we'll be there to help them with any with any questions they have. And um, you've been very kind to offer a 20% discount. Um, Constantine's team have provided a discount code. Um, which I'm going to put on the show notes, folks. So if you go to the show notes, it'll be there prominently. And if you go to the website and use that, you get 20% off, which is very generous of you. Um, how do people get hold of you, John? Well, you can find me at my website, which is lockdowndesign.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at lockdown underscore. How do the people get a hold of you, Jonathan? Well, I think the main thing is be aware that WP Tonic offer a boutique maintenance small fix service where uh, on our medium product we do unlimited small jobs um, covering a wide spectrum from WooCommerce to membership sites. Um, we also keep everything secure, up to date and I think we offer tremendous value with a very personal touch. All clients I personally know and handle their requests. Um, to get hold of me personally, the best thing is Twitter and use my Twitter handle at Jonathan Denwood or just email us. Um, the email address is all over the website. I respond to all email personally myself and like I say, I'm very responsive on Twitter. And the number of people have commented how responsive we are. So um, we're going to wrap up. Um, just a couple of things, folks. Please go to the iTunes channel and give us um, subscribe and also give us a review. That really, really helps, folks. And also, um, remember, we do a live show. Um, we're at the present moment doing it on Blab, but um, in the next few weeks, we'll probably be moving to a, a slightly different solution. But that's a live show, so um, you can ask us questions, and we normally have a fantastic WordPress panel of some of the most interesting, biggest hitters in the WordPress community. So please join us at 10 a.m. on Saturday, Pacific Standard Time, and join the conversation. So we're going to wrap it up now, and but please stay with us. I'll go to the YouTube channel or to the website and listen to some more of this fascinating conversation about hosting and how to get the best value. See you next time, folks. Bye. Bye. Right, so we'll continue the discussion. John, ask Constantine some more questions. We'll we continue the video for 10 minutes and uh, offer some more value. Yeah. Sure thing. Um, so, you know, uh, how did you come to partner with DigitalOcean and Linode and, and Vulture? Like, uh, what was that process like, just reaching out to them and, and becoming partners with them? Yeah, well, that's relatively easy to become a partner of, of those three companies. They're always looking out for new opportunities because uh, they're looking to grow. So they would, they're always open and available in discussing and checking your needs and customizing and offering you a customized solution. Definitely, definitely. Um, as far as like the managed WordPress space, do you think that how much room do you think that there is to grow? There, there's a lot of people jumping into the managed WordPress space uh, right now, and and how much opportunity do you still see out there? Yeah, there is actually a really good, a really great opportunity right now. I think people are starting to understand the differences between uh, the standard cPanel host and a more specialized provider, uh, and the benefits in choosing uh, the more specialized provider instead of the standard uh, cPanel host. And I think I think one of the great things that we didn't touch upon because we try and keep the interview part for the podcast on this particular show to 30 minutes. Um, but I think the other benefit, you know, and I'm not knocking WP Engine or other similar companies because obviously WP Engine is a superb company and the, the CEO and the staff are top rate. But one of the things is you're offering a real boutique service, aren't you, where you will work with a client. If they've got a particular plugin 
which um, might not be acceptable for WP Tonic, and it's crucial. You will try and work with the client, won't you, Constantine? Yeah, of course. We'll we'll make it work basically, as long as there isn't anything uh, an issue with the actual coding of the development of the plugin. We're we're gonna make it work. So you're getting a really kind of boutique. Um, which somebody, you know, obviously WP Tonic, and also you're going to be offering some staging functionality for the developer crew. Is that not correct? Yep, that's correct. All of our packages include access to our staging server, so they can at any time request a staging URL. We can get them set up so that they can uh, develop their site on the staging URL without affecting and without taking up any of the resources on their VPSs. So it runs independently of their of their VPS. Or it runs on our own servers. So you get a very boutique, uh, extremely competitive price, aren't you? Yes, uh, I believe that as well. Uh, in terms of the features we provide, I believe that as well. And we're also gonna uh, in the next weeks uh, be adding phone support as well on all of our uh, our site and all of our packages. Got a question, John? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, if you could point out like one characteristic that separates uh, WP Hosting Spot from your competitors, what what is the one distinct thing that in in your company's story that is is different from the other companies out there offering managed WordPress hosting? Yeah, but I think that what we do is we concentrate on offering a more personalized service. Uh, Personally, I don't even see clients as clients. I see clients as members. I see the members of, of, of my company, basically. I see, the, I see them as part of my company. Uh, and that's why we'll help them as much as whatever they need uh, to do. Yeah, that's great. Um, another factor, I know this is going to probably be a bit difficult, but compared to um, long as it's set up, is there any way you could quantify the speed benefit from, um, let's say, you know, three, five, seven dollars shared hosting to when when they come to one of your fully set up VPA systems? What kind in percentage terms? I know it's difficult, and if you don't want to give a percentage, I totally understand. But is there any way you could quantify the kind of speed gain um, that they might obtain? Well, I can actually. I've, I've recently, just yesterday, I, we were involved in migrating a, uh, a couple of customer sites from a VPS that he had with another provider that was with CPanel, uh, and he was he was having really huge loads. He was having a load of over 60. Uh, all his sites were WordPress, by the way. He was having a load of over 60 on uh, on his VPS, so he was really uh, using up all his resources. And he would have really needed to upgrade. To maybe a dedicated server with that load that he had, so we managed, we moved him over to us, and we we saw immediate results in terms of load speed. Uh, he would he would he could even barely, barely load his site. Most of the times it would time out or load after a couple of minutes. Uh, so we moved him to us, and he could see his sites were all loading within less than three seconds from what he commented to us after we moved his sites. So he saw a great improvement. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Um, I think we'll wrap it up now. Um, I think we covered a lot, um, and um, we're going to stop the recording now for the YouTube and our our, webs um, our website, folks. Like I say, um, come over on Saturday. Uh, we're still going to be using Blab probably for the next couple of weeks, but we're looking at better solutions. Let's start at 10 p.m. Like I say, we've got a fantastic. 10 a.m. Thank yeah. you. Um, Pacific <laughs> Standard Time. Be a bit late, Tim. Not for Constantine. He'd, be, he'd probably love it at 10 p.m. Uh, um, <laughs> but it'll be a bit late for old cronies like me. Uh, um, but uh, we have a fantastic panel. Morton's been joining us lately. I, don't, I have no idea if we'll be joining us this Saturday. Depends on how interesting he finds the topic. So me and John will have to discuss that tomorrow. Um, mm, yep. Or even now, actually, but probably tomorrow. Um, I've got to be off. Um, thank you, Constantine. I think it's been a great interview. I, I think um, people really should be looking at your service. Like I say, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be moving, hopefully, the, the WP Tonic to you. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure.
Right. Thank you very much, Constantine.